I was having difficulty to unmute initially. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much, um, Hannah. Uh, good afternoon and good evening, uh, everyone. Um, I want to welcome us to the last lecture of this um, for this uh, workshop, and um, I'm going to be introducing our next speaker uh, in person of uh, Professor Titilayo Omolara Johnson. Uh, she's a distinguished uh, biochemist in Jos, Nigeria, and is a renowned scholar and scientist with significant contributions to biochemistry. She's currently a professor at the University of Jos, and she's associated with the Jairus Computational Biology Center. Her academic journey began at the University of Ibadan, leading to an impressive career with an MSc and PhD from the University of Illinois. Professor Johnson's research focuses on parasitic infections, exploring metabolic pathways, inflammatory responses, and disease biomarkers. She has over 60 publications, receiving recognition like the Best Poster Award at 2017, World Congress on Medicinal Plants. Research grants from prestigious institutions, including the National Institute of Health support at work. Professor Johnson actively engaged in scientific communities, being a member of professional societies. As a dedicated educator, she imparts knowledge in enzymology, toxicology, biochemistry, and molecular biology. Please make welcome uh, Professor Johnson as she give a final talk on this workshop. You're welcome. Uh. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Emmanuel, I greet everyone. Thank you for staying up till now. It's been a very, very long day for those of us who attended on site. And we've been there since morning and uh, we just had a two hours break and we are here again. And some of them are here also. So I want to welcome everybody this will be the last session, and I hope you'll be patient enough to, to um, at least gain as much as you can. So we are going to be talking very briefly and also doing some practical on structure-based drug design, specifically molecular docking. So I'm going to start with a very brief lecture. I know we have people here who have been attending Jarry's workshop for a long time and are already familiar and conversant with some of the basic principles of molecular docking. But I also know that there are people here who have no experience. So I'm going to be taking into consideration such people who do not have any experience at all. So welcome on board. I'm going to be sharing the screen while we we'll talk briefly about structure-based drug design and molecular docking. Okay, so I hope you can see the screen. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not the, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me close this. This is not what I want to use. Okay. Okay, sorry, let me stop share while I look for my slide. Mute. 
Okay, sorry about that. Let me now share the correct one now. Oh, God. Ah, I hope. I hope it's the correct one I said. Honestly, I can't find it. Okay, so sorry about that. I think we can now see the correct screen now. Am I? Okay. Okay, so can we continue now? Sorry about that. So I'm going to be talking about structure-based virtual screening. And we are going to be focusing on molecular docking. Can we see the screen? Please, if you can see the screen, let me know. Yes, we can. Man. Yes, am I still there? Um, you okay, too. so. Okay. Let's start by looking at very briefly about what virtual screening is all about. Virtual screening. Uh, is a computational method to screen a large database of compounds. It's a method that helps to avoid the very long process of drug design. You know, drug design and drug discovery, drug development is a very, very long process that can take years, many years, and can cost a, a, a fortune cost a lot of money to do. However, with virtual screening, you can screen a large database of compounds, thereby filtering and selecting some heat that can be taken to taken further to some experimental work. So virtual screening is a computational method for screening a large database of compounds. And um, there are different methods for virtual screening. Like virtual screening, let me say that this, that um, it is actually a, a way to, or an alternative to high throughput screening. In high throughput screening is an experimental work, is a wet lab experiments in which you screen a large database of compounds, you screen them in vitro or in vivo, 
and at the end of the day, you have spent a lot. But for virtual screening, you can do a computational, use some computational methods to screen out a few compounds that can now go ahead for further studies. So it's um, there are methods, there are different kinds of methods in virtual screening. We have the ligand-based virtual screening. And the this um, virtual screening requires the uh, knowledge of a 3D. We, we need the structure of a target. We need the 3D structure of a protein or a target. We are going to be talking about what a target is very soon. You need to have a target. You may know the structure of the target or the, the protein or whatever the target is. And in case you do not know the structure of the target, we can still do the virtual screening. So in a case whereby you know the structure of the target of the protein, you can we can do a structure-based virtual screening. So structure-based virtual screening is based on the knowledge of the targets. You know the 3D structure of the target, you have determined it, it has been elucidated, and then you can now find some ligands that can bind to some specific sites on the target. That is what will lead us to talk about protein ligand docking. But before then, in case you do not know the structure of the target, you know the target, but you don't know the structure of the target, then we can do a ligand-based virtual screening in which uh, we, we use the structure of the ligand. There are some structures on the ligands or features on the ligands that determines the activity of the compound. So based on structures, we can be able to screen out some compounds that are active. And that's, there are several ways of doing that. We have the QSAR method, uh, structural activity relationship, pharmacophore. We can um, explore a lot of such procedures. Now, for the purpose of this training, we are going to be focusing on structure-based virtual screening. Okay, so for structure-based virtual screening, we are going to be focusing specifically or majorly on molecular docking. I'm sure many people here are already conversant with molecular docking. Some are still learning and there is still more to learn. So what is molecular docking? Like I said, for structure-based virtual screening, you know the you know your target or target protein, and then you know the three-dimensional structure of your protein. All you need to do is to look for ligands that can occupy some binding sites on the ligand, compounds that can interact with the binding sites, amino acid residues of the ligand. In order to do that, we do molecular docking. So molecular docking is a computational technique or a simulation procedure for studying molecular recognition, molecular interaction, and um, conformation of a receptor ligand complex. That is actually the original definition for molecular docking. Molecular docking was initially developed to study molecular recognition, molecular interactions between a, a ligand and a receptor, which is very, very important to the function of that protein. It is used to study the conformation of a complex, a receptor ligand complex. So Molecular docking has revolutionized the way scientists understand interaction between biomolecules, that is receptors, 
and ligands. And as a result of that, it has helped to shed light on the molecular basis of a lot of biological processes. A lot of processes that we understand today, a lot of biochemical processes that we understand today were actually elucidated using molecular docking because a lot of biological responses that take place are based on some receptor ligand interactions which um, results into specific responses. So molecular docking has helped and shed light on some the molecular basis of a lot of processes. We have, I have some uh, diagrams there, for example, hemoglobin, the structure and function of hemoglobin was actually elucidated using molecular docking. The beta, alpha and beta chains of hemoglobin was elucidated and the functions of hemoglobin, the position of the heme and in the interaction with the heme is, was understood as a result of molecular docking. So molecular docking actually originated or was invented or developed to understand molecular interactions. And now it is being explored in drug design. So like we have been saying, molecular docking, um, receptor ligand interactions, are central to various biological processes. And they have profound implications in health and disease. That is why we can explore molecular docking for drug design. Yes, because uh, a, ligand risk, a ligand at one time or the other will react with a receptor in the body to produce a particular response, and if there is a default somewhere, if there is a, 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 a an inability to bind one way or the other, the, the function of that protein will be affected, and then that has a great implication on health. So receptor ligand interaction involves the binding of a ligand, the binding of a ligand molecule to a specific receptor. The re interaction is highly specific. It is often characterized by specific molecular recognition events and rely on complementary shapes, charges, and other molecular features. So it is all these features, the complementary shapes, Okay, so receptor ligand interaction, like I said, involves the binding of a ligand molecule to a specific receptor molecule. It's a biological process. It takes place within the cells. There are a lot of receptors in the cell. It's not showing anything. That when a ligand binds to elicit some interactions, and such interaction is highly selective characterized by specific molecular recognition events, which is the biochemical principle, the biochemical basis for molecular docking, molecular recognition. There are features on the ligand. There are charges. There are group, functional groups. There are features on the on the also on the ligand that are complementary to the features on the at the binding site or binding pockets of the protein. So that is what results into molecular recognition, complementary shapes, complementary charges, and other molecular features. And you know, we just did some 
training on cryo EM and we we, we realize uh, we we where we talked about elucidation of the structure of a protein. So a protein that the structure has been elucidated, we already know the binding pocket, we know the features that are there. By the time you bring a ligand, you know, you can easily simulate, you can easily predict whether this ligand can bind to this pocket because of complementarity and then complementary charges and a lot of features. Video is great. Let me just put it up. Okay, so the receptor can be a protein or a nucleic acid molecule in which to which specific ligands can bind to activate specific cellular processes. So, what are ligands? I'm not talking about drugs now. I'm not talking about our compounds now. Ligands generally within uh, in a biological system, they are molecules that can bind to receptors. For example, we have hormones acting as ligands binding to specific receptors to lead to some signaling functions. We have antigens binding to some antibodies. We have growth factors and other signaling molecules. And then we have our drug. So it is the same mechanism that are, or principle that our drugs are um, follow, that our drugs follow. So receptor ligand interactions. That is why we employ the technique of molecular docking to study drug target interactions. So by interacting with ligands, receptors activate or inhibit downstream biochemical signaling pathways to regulate cellular processes. So when we do molecular docking, sometimes we use it to determine the inhibitory activity of a particular compound or activating activity. Some receptors bind as some ligands bind to some receptors to activate, while some bind to some receptors to inhibit some processes. So the dysfunction of signaling pathways is responsible for a variety of diseases. Understanding how ligands interact with target proteins is fundamental in drug discovery. So it's important not to, or not to know that a ligand can bind to a protein, it's not enough, but to understand the mode of binding to so understand the, the conformation of the complex will determine whether the ligand can elicit a reaction or not. So it aids in the design of molecules that can specifically and effectively bind to target proteins to regulate their functions. So molecular docking is a computational approach. You can use it to predict the conformation and affinities of real compounds of virtual molecules, molecules that you have designed, molecules that you have generated, molecules that you have isolated. So we have real molecules, we have virtual molecules. Against a receptor of interest, you can use it to perform virtual screening of a large database of ligands for a target. And not only that, you can use it to determine the mechanism of binding, the mechanism of ligand binding, which is very, very important for the, the, the corresponding response, corresponding um, therapeutic response. You need to understand the mechanism of binding because the protein has a function. The protein has a, a, a binding site and the protein has some important residues that when a ligand binds to, you can predict the kind of response that will take place. So you can use it to identify key receptor residues responsible for ligand activity. 
there are some key receptor residues that are responsible for activity. So we have target protein. We also have target residues on our receptors. We on those proteins. You when you do your docking, you have to target some specific amino acid residues. Or if you do not know those target residues, you can use molecular docking to understand what those target residues are. And that can help you to understand the mechanism of action of that receptor. So it can help you to, we can use molecular docking for ligand optimization to obtain a compound with optimal characteristics. So when you do your docking, you already understand, you know the features on the ligand, you know the features on the, or the, the residues, target residues on the receptor, you know the features that are present on your ligand that are responsible for binding. You can do some optimization. You can remove some groups that are hindering binding. You can add some other groups. You can change or modify the structure of your ligand based on the binding to optimize the binding, to increase the affinity of the ligand for the protein, or to change some admit parameters. Mr. Aloye talked about admits. You want to modify the admit properties to be more favorable. You can, when you do your docking, you already know the important features. You can remove some that they are not responsible for binding, but they are responsible for maybe lipophilicity or, or solubility. They have a, one, this, this hydroxy group is increasing the solubility and you want to reduce the solubility, you remove that hydroxy group. So through molecular docking, you can do a lot of things you can, that can help improve your ligand for better binding and better drug-like properties. So molecular docking is often is employed as an initial step in many drug discovery programs. So there are two major components to molecular docking. We have the search algorithm and the scoring function because there are two major goals of molecular docking to understand the conformation and the optimal orientation of the interacting molecules. You want to understand the optimal orientation, the best course of conformation of the ligand in the active site or binding site of the receptor. So you do a conformational search. So that is one aspect. The second aspect is the scoring function to estimate the binding affinities. And um, the binding affinities can be used to rank the ligand and predict the best binding ligand, the best affinity ligand. So once you know the best affinity ligand, you can select the best ligand. You can refer to them as uh, the heat compounds that you can further work on to and then do further experimental research. So you can rank molecular doc the scoring function will help you to rank your ligands based on affinity. So there, there are some applications of molecular docking, virtual screening, lead optimization, identification of the active ingredients of your plant extract for those working on plant extracts you have done some in vivo studies you you have you have identified the best extract you have identified the best fraction maybe you did some fractionation you have identified the best fraction and then you have elucidated you have characterized the fra fraction you have identified the compounds present in the fraction, whether through GCMS or HPLC or, or any other procedure. 
and then you have your compounds already identified and then you can do use molecular docking to identify which of those compounds are active for further studies you can also use it to elucidate the mechanism of action of drugs to predict possible interaction with proteins or dna you can use it for toxicological studies to understand the toxicological basis of some compounds maybe some toxic compounds maybe even the drugs and the drugs you are trying to design and so on we can use molecular docking for such studies so like i said the basic principle the basic chemical principle behind molecular docking is molecular recognition so when you do your molecular docking you need to understand that there are uh, there are specific interactions that that is helping the binding molecular recognition play important roles in many biological processes such as signal transduction cell recognition cell regulation enzymatic reactions and so on and so forth we have a large number of interactions that contribute to molecular recognition we have hydrogen bonding which is very important we have a lot of we have hydrophobic interactions which is one of the major interaction one of the major forces responsible for binding you know the ligand has usually have an hydrophobic part you know one of the characteristics of a drug is the ability to be able to to be uh, the ability to be absorbed pass through the membrane and enter the target cell and interact with the target molecule so hydrophobicity is one of the good characteristics of a good ligand so hydrophobic interaction is important because the hydrophobic ligand will sit in the hydrophobic pocket we have van der Waal forces pi pi interaction that is aromatic interactions we have halo halogen bonding and different kinds of interactions responsible so this diagram shows the most some of the most important interactions in you will see in docking that are responsible for binding we have hydrophobic interactions having the highest percentage hydrogen bonding pi stacking weak hydrogen bonding salt bridge amide stacking cation pi these are some of the very important interactions some of the very important features of a a the, the receptor and the ligand that helps in binding okay so So I don't want to talk too much on this hydrophobic interaction, but it's actually a major stabilizing factor for biomolecular complexes. So before binding, both molecules interact with the solvent. But during binding, once we are able to establish an hydrophobic contact between the ligand and the receptor, there will be stability. So hydrophobic interaction is important for stability. Hydrophobic interaction can create a favorable environment within the binding site of the protein by excluding water. So very soon we are going to demonstrate docking and we are going to, you, are, you will see that we will try to remove water from the active site unless water is required there unless water is responsible for catalysis that is why before you start docking you need to understand the 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 protein very well you need to understand the mechanism of binding you need to understand whether you need to remove your water or you need to retain the water okay so now let's talk briefly about those targets the proteins the molecular targets it's a molecule is a biomolecule whose activity is modified by a drug resulting in a specific effect. So in the context of drug discovery, is a specific molecule or biological entity within a cell or organism that is the focus of therapeutic interact intervention. So you have identified a, a disease, you understand that there are some proteins that are 
relevant that are relevant to that disease, they can serve as a ta target if they are druggable. We will not be able to talk about druggable targets. Okay, yes, we will we'll mention it briefly and move on. So molecular targets can be diverse. We have proteins, some, some are proteins, nucleic acid, lipids, carbohydrates, some metabol different kinds of metabolites, different kinds of cellular structures can also be targets, but we are focusing on proteins. So before you select, we are gradually coming to the practical. Before you select your target, if it is drug discovery you are doing, you must ensure that your target, the protein you are choosing is druggable. You don't just go and carry any kind of protein and say, yes, this protein is involved in this disease, so I want to dock. I know that a lot of people made that mistake recently and they got stuck along the line. So you need to ensure that the protein you are using, if it is meant for drug design, that the protein is druggable. So a druggable target is a protein or, or peptide or nucleic acid with, the acti with an activity that can be modulated. It, it, it's a protein or a molecule that when a drug binds to, it can alter the function of that target and produce a therapeutic effect. So there are several human proteins, but not all of them are druggable. We have about 16% of uh, human proteins that are undruggable. We have 3% of those proteins that are approved targets. Some are potential targets. So you need to do your search very well before you begin your docking. So properties of an ideal target, it must be disease modifying. The modulation of the target should be less important under physiological conditions. And then if the drug ability is not obvious, you should be able to carry out a, you should be able to carry out a drug ability test to validate whether it is druggable or not if you know the 3D st structure, or if you don't have the 3D structure, you can do homology modeling and perform a drugability assessment before, or you just go ahead and pick a, a target that has already been validated. The target should be assayable. That you should be able to conduct a high throughput screening, experimental study, in vivo study to validate the of the targets. If you have conducted docking, you should be able to, you it is it should be a protein that you can also use for an in vitro or in vivo assay. And the target expression should not be uniformly distributed. There should be a target site. It shouldn't be distributed uh, everywhere. It should not be uniformly distributed. There should be a specific site of its expression. And a target stroke disease specific biomarker should exist to monitor therapeutic efficacy. So you should be able to monitor the therapeutic efficacy and there should be favorable prediction of possible side effects. And then there should be an, a favorable intellectual property. So you can't just pick any target like that and say you are docking, make sure it has been validated if you want to validate it, you can validate it. But if not, make sure it's a validated target you are using. So how do you get your target? You can do a literature search. You can go, go through some databases. You can explore databases to find druggable targets. These are a list of some databases you can explore to get your druggable targets. I have used many of them. I have used um, a number of them. Uh, the last workshop we had, I demonstrated how to use open targets to find your druggable targets for docking. But we will not be able to do that now. Then ligand selection. How do you get your ligand? You can get your ligand from natural sources, maybe from plants, extracts, maybe from um, secondary metabolites of uh, microorganisms that you have isolated, uh, you have uh, elucidated 
the structures. What you need is the structure of those compounds. So once you have the structure of those compounds, that, that is, I will very soon we'll show you how to get the structures of the compounds. Then you have newly synthesized compounds, real or virtual. Then there are a lot of chemical libraries and databases you can explore for your, to use as ligands. Mr. Waloyo showed you some. These are other examples of databases where you can get your compound from. We're going to demonstrate some very soon. We are going to get some ligands from PopChem. The, the ligand we are going to be using today is gotten from PopChem. We have all that. The last time I demonstrated that to use a coconut, which is a collection of open natural products. I will advise you to go and explore coconuts. You will find a lot of ligands there you can use for your research. You can also explore Dr. Duke's pharma, phytochemical and ethnobotanical databases that can also help you to get ligands for docking. If you, let me give you one secret. Um, if you have a, comp a plant that you want to use for, uh, you want to study and then um, you, you can just go ahead and look for the compounds of that plant. If the compounds have been deposited in any of these databases, some compounds, the compounds of some, Plant, some plants have been deposited or microorganisms have been deposited and on PopChem, some are in Dr. Duke, some are in some of these databases. Just collect them and continue to do your computational study, but it will not end there. You will still have to validate using experimental or wet lab, wet lab studies. Okay, so this is where I would like to stop for the lecture. Uh, we'll go. We'll go straight to the practical. Only if there are questions, but I will. I want to request that we reserve the questions for now, because we need to do some demonstration of how we can conduct virtual screening with molecular. I mean, using molecular docking. So I'm going to stop here and then move on to the practical session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So let's do a little bit of practical. It's going to, we are going to do a simple docking, very simple for the sake of those who are just learning how to dock. We are going to be using Schrodinger suits. That, uh, we are going to be using Maestro. Yes, we have learned how to use camera for docking in one of our workshops. We have learned how to use Pyrex. We've used Discovery Studio to view our structures before, but today we are going to use Maestro on Schrodinger. So I'm going to begin to uh, share the screen again, and then we will launch our Maestro. Okay, so I have opened Maestro already. I hope um, you can see it. Please, if you can see it, say hi. I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, yeah, it's it's visible. It's visible. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. Thank you. Okay, so now I just 
launched Maestro. I opened it. Okay, so I have um, launched my Maestro and I'm going to begin to do the work. The, right now we have our ligands ready. Let me uh, take you through how we are, which ligands I am using. I'm going to be using some compounds from Artemisia Anwa. Um, I know that uh, many of us know Artemisia Anwa. It is from Artemisia Anwa that we got Artemisinin. And uh, we, apart from Artemisinin, there are a lot of other compounds in Artemisia Anwa. There are thousand, uh, there are over a thousand compounds that have been identified in Artemisia Anwa, which has not been explored. So we can still explore it. So I am coming to PopChem and I'm going to search for Artemisia Anwa. Okay, so um, I need the taxonomy, so I'll go to taxonomy. That is where I will find the compounds. That is where I will find Artemisia annua. So we did it, so you can see the taxonomy ID. So when you, if you do use it, make sure you take note of the taxonomy ID. So I'm going to open it, click on it, and then um, scroll down. I'm going to look for the chemical chemicals and bioactive chemicals and bioactivities so i can just click on it it will take me there so you can can you all see what i'm seeing in artemisia annua we have um, about 199 metabolites that have been deposited in pop chem and then when you scroll down you also see natural the totality of the natural products that, so, that has been identified and deposited in this database. We have 1,286 items under natural products for Artemisia annua, many of which has not been explored. So what you need to do now is to begin. To, so, so what I, I have uh, downloaded about 10 of the metabolites, I've downloaded the first 10 I can see here. You can download everything in K if it is what you want to do. So I've downloaded, and this is how to download. So I click on this compound, click on the compound. So this is the compound. A lot of information about the compound can be found here. You can find a lot of information about the compound here when you are reporting it. But what I want to do now is to download the SDF or structured data file structure of this compound. So it's with, once I click on download, it will take me here. I, I have the 3D structure and then I'll download the SDF format. So I'll do same for all the compounds I want to download. If you want to download all the 1000 compounds, you can go ahead and download everything. I like using all the compound, every available compound I can get. I like using it because you don't know which one at the end of the day will work. So like I said, there are other databases for like in coconuts, you can get thousands, thousands and thousands of chemicals you can download. For coconuts, you, can, you, you don't need to start downloading the SDF formats one by one. At one click, you can get all the SDF formats downloaded at once, and then you just import them into your Maestro. Okay, so let's go back to Maestro. Um, oh, okay, sorry, before we go back to Maestro, let me also tell you about the ligand, the, the protein I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using Plasmodium falciparum lactate dehydrogenase complex with NADH. So how do I get that? I have already done my research. 
I have found out that plasmodium lactate dehydrogenase is a druggable target for anti-malaria drug discovery. And um, it is uh, one of the, it is an enzyme that catalyzes the terminal stage of glycolysis in the parasite. Humans also have it, but the structure of that of humans, there, there, are, there, are, there, there are differences in some of the features. So the structures are not conserved in both. So we that is why we are able to just screen out, um, we are able to use um, plasmodium falciparum lactate dehydrogenase for anti malaria drug discovery. And then I have selected this one complex with NADH. NADH is the cofactor for this, com this protein. NADH is the cofactor. So, uh, and it is what it is the site of the NADH that is the target site. The site where NADH binds on plasmodium lactate dehydrogenase is the target, is our target site. So that is why I have selected this. So uh, that the, the the take note of the PDBID 1C2C. Okay, so now we have already seen my, you have seen my ligands, you have seen my protein. Let's go back to Maestro. Okay, so the first thing we will do once you launch Maestro is to change your working directory. Change working directory so that everything you do, we go to a directory. So now I am going to open a, get a file. I'm going to, okay, no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I have a file here that I've already created. I call it workshop tutorial. So I have created this file. I just click on it and make it my uh, working directory. I select this and then I can save. After changing my working directory, I can now I go back to file and save this project. I want to save this project. So it's okay, I'll save it as project three. There are many projects in that directory. So I'm changing it to, I'm saving this work I want to do in project three. It's important you save your work so that anytime you need your work, you can easily go to the file and open it. Okay, so now we are ready. The first thing we are going to do is protein preparation. We need to pro prepare our protein for docking. So let's come to this protein preparation wizard. Once you click on it, it will open this protein preparation workflow. And that is what um, we are going to be using to prepare our protein. So the first thing I'm going to do is to import the protein. And how do I import the protein? I will come to get PDB, get the PDB, I, I uh, click on it. Then I will type my PDB ID here, 1T2C. We all remember that's the PDB ID for the plasmodium lactate dehydrogenase I want to use. Okay, so, So once I do that, I will click on download. So I'm downloading from Maestro directly, I mean, into my Okay, all right, so you can see the protein now. You can all see the protein. So the next thing we do is to prepare the protein. Let's go back to that protein preparation workflow that I opened. 
and then uh, we we'll begin to prepare the protein now. Yes, for this version of uh, Schrodinger, you can do everything at once. You can you can decide to do every click on. You can come to interactive and then just click on run. You can run everything at once, but I don't want to do that. I want to, okay, yes, you can run everything at once, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it step by step so that we can be able to monitor what is happening to our protein. You can determine what you want to do to your protein. You can determine whether you want to delete anything or retain anything. So what I'm going to do now, I'll go back. I'll go back and begin to do it one by one. Okay, so um, pre-process. I can start by pre-processing it. On that pre-process, you can add a cap that is the, it can add N-acetyl and N-acetyl or, I mean, the, the cap of your protein can be added. Then N-methyl amide. And then you, for to the N, to the, to the N-terminal, and then you can also cap the C-terminal if you like. You, if you like, you may uncheck it if you are not interested in that. Well, it's not actually necessary. It depends on the work we are doing, but I hardly use it because it's not relevant for the work I'm doing. And then you can fill in the missing side chains. You can come yet for more options and just, uh, there are many things you can do. You can assign bond orders, replace hydrogens, add tab terminal hydrogens and so on. These are things you can do, but you can also leave it as default. For those who are doing docking for the first time, I will advise you to just make use of the default setting. So I'm going to make use of the default setting. I'm going to pre-process. So my pre-processing is taking place now. It's pre-processing and when So you have, we have to wait for it to finish pre the pre-processing process. And then, this may take a while, but I guess we have chosen a protein that is not too big so that our work can be fast. Okay, so we are waiting. You can ask your questions while doing that, if you have anything to say. Okay. No. Oh, so, okay, okay, okay. It's, it's as, the work has been incorporated already. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so. It's still running. It's still running. The preprocessing is still running. Okay. Yes, it has just finished. You can see the pre the preprocess has been checked. So we have finished preprocessing our protein. We have added some missing side chains, and then we are now ready to diagnose and analyze our structure. So you can click on check structure. Check the structure to ensure that everything is okay. Okay, so for now, for this one, it's, it's telling us that some residues have alternate positions. This may interfere with some calculations on the protein. So to discard the alternate, choose the position you wish to keep and click commit. So I would like to choose this that is appearing here, and then I will commit. And then go on. Something is not, okay. Okay, so I go on with my work, going back to the workflow. 
Okay, so I have done, I have done my diagnosis and um, I'm okay with that with diagnosis because there's still a lot to do. And then the next thing is to optimize hydrogen bond assignments. Optimize to address any overlapping hydrogens. So, like I said, you can leave it at the default setting. So click on optimize. We aut optimizing, we automatically had hydroxyl to um, some of the the amino acids to that to to so so that um, our hydrogen bonding can we can we can create a protein we, we are making a protein that can easily form hydrogen bonds so we are optimizing hydrogen bond assignment okay so that is that is has also finished so the next thing is to minimize and delete water. And that is on that will be done on that cleanup. Run a restrained minimization, then optically delete specified water. So we click on cleanup to do that. So we are cleaning up to minimize and then remove, delete some water. I told you the other time that we may want to remove some water from the active site to make the to make our bind to create an hydrophobic pocket that our ligand can easily bind to we want to even in in nature in vivo before a ligand an hydrophobic ligand can sit in the hydrophobic pocket water has to give way so we want to clear the the some some water away from the binding site, and that is going on right now. So it's taking quite a while. Well, if it's a big protein, it can take longer, but we have selected a very simple one for the purpose of this workshop. Minimization can take some time, but we, we will soon be through with it. After preparing our protein, we will go ahead and prepare our ligands also for docking. Okay, please, if anybody has any question, you can go ahead and be asking while we are waiting for our protein to be ready. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Ma. Okay, good evening. Yes, uh, I just want to confirm something. Uh, I want to confirm: is it possible for us to use a uh, maestro for um multiple docking first and second? Is it possible for because I observe that most of the docking we are doing is always um rigid docking is it possible for maestro to for someone to use maestro for um flexible docking okay thank you for the question yes it is possible to use maestro for flexible docking uh, but what we are what we are, what you mean by flexible docking is you mean a flexible receptor 
because what we are doing right now, we are actually doing a flexi flexible, ligand, flexible ligand rigid receptor drop docking. Our ligand is going to, very soon when we begin to, to do the docking, you will see that we're going to select flexible for our ligand. Yes, if it is for the receptor, there is, a, there, there is a, an opportunity to do what we call uh, induced fit docking. So one of the one of the tasks that Maestro can perform is induced fit docking, but we are not going to be doing that today. You can do an induced fit docking in which you you induce flexibility in the active site, so that when you bind your ligand, the active site will adjust based on the induced fit model for better binding. Sometimes when we finish this type of docking I'm showing you right now, and you have seen that a ligand is promising, but the binding affinity, the, the, this ligand is as if it's falling below the, the, the binding energy or the docking score is below what is expected. I know that this ligand should do better than this. Then you, you induce flexibility by doing induced fit docking so that the active site can conform to the shape of the ligand and then there will be better binding. So that is possible. I hope that answers your question. We need to go on now. Our protein preparation is completed now. So we can just close this, our workflow. Okay. Okay, let me just minimize it. It's not responding well. Okay, so now our protein is ready. But before we go to the ligands, the next thing we need to do, before we go to the ligands, the next thing we need to do is to create the, a grid box. We want to create our receptor grid. What is a receptor grid? The receptor grid is, is a specified site where you want your ligand to bind. And in this case, we are going to be depending on the binding site of the co-crystallized ligand. So we are going to create a receptor grid around the co-crystallized ligand. We want the ligand to dock in that site. So what we are going to do now, I'm, I'm going to make my ligand more visible so that I can be able to use it for my receptor grid generation. So I can come to this side. You can see the, the ligands. Yes, ligands. I have my ligand here. This is the ligand. This is the co-crystallized ligand. That's the NAD, NADH. So I click on it and um, let me, you come here. You can click on any of these features to make it more visible. If I click on it, you can see that it's clearer now. I can easily see it so that it can help me to generate my grid box. So to create my grid box or generate my receptor grid, I will come to task and then search for receptor grid generation. It's because I've been working on it. That is why it is shown here. If you can't see, you can search for it. So I don't need to search for it, it's already here. I click on receptor grid generation on Glide. Glide is all we're going to use for docking. Okay, so I've, re I've selected it. This box will open up for me. Let me, select, let me name my job. So this one, I can name it with the name of my ligand, uh, my, my protein. My protein is what? 1T2C uh, underscore, so that I will know which one underscore um, workshop, the one I use for workshop. This, is, this will help me to remember. Okay, so, well, so, the, so let's go to the receptor. You know, there are so many 
task you can do. We click on receptor. Which receptor are we using? We are using the molecule. So click on molecule and then go to site. Which site do you want to create your grid? I want my grid to be created based on the workspace ligand. This is the workspace ligand. That's the NAD. The NADH, the co-crystallized ligand. I can click on centroid of selected residue. If I don't have a co-crystallized ligand and I know the active site residue, I can select the residues by coming here. Or I can supply, I can click on supplied X, Y, Z coordinates. When I click on that, I can be able to, I can even do a complete, I can even select the entire protein structure i can select the size but this time around i want to use the centroid of workspace ligand so i've selected it has been selected already so th these are the two things we are going to be using um we may not bother about this let's just leave everything as default so we can move on now i can work on my settings my job settings um, yes, okay, my job settings is okay. We have eight local hosts and they are working. Okay, so that's okay. What else do I need to do? I have named my job, then I click on run. Okay, no, 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 I can't click on run. I have not selected, I have not picked my ligand. Pick atom in the ligand. So I pick, you can see that I can see my ligand so i pick it once i pick it my grid box is generated so this grid box is where my docking will be done so and i will now click on run so i'm running it i'm running the job so i'm um already generating my receptor grid. Okay, so because the work has started, you can see this green light being shown here. It's going to be checked once the job is done. So we're going to be waiting for the grid box to be generated. It's running currently, and it will soon finish running. So do we have any other question? Good evening, Prof. Okay, so uh, um, we can also, the, please, Mr. Emmanuel, you can help me check if, if there are questions in the chat box. Yeah, I just checked. I think there's only one question. Um, okay, someone just asked now if you can explain the last step. And then a question by Ruben was, does this maestro only work on Linux? Yeah, so the two questions. So Bechuku wanted to repeat the last step. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, Ruben the last step. Work. Okay, I'm not going to repeat it because it's running currently. In fact, the work has been incorporated already. But this is what I did was just to go to the task task bar, click on receptor grid, grid generation, and this box will open. So once it opens, my receptor I've selected. I'm, I'm, uh, I've made sure that molecule is the receptor that I want to pick the uh, pick to identify the ligand molecule. So it's it's the molecule I want to identify and then the site so you use receptor you use um, the site i click on centroid of workspace ligand that's what i want to use to generate my grid box and then you pick your once you pick your ligand it will say pick atom in the ligand so once you pick any atom in the ligand it will generate the grid box and then you can now be begin to run. So right now we are finished running the grid box 
And that is why it is being checked here. So now we are through with our protein preparation. Let's go quickly to our ligand preparation. So to prepare a ligand, let me clear this workspace first. Right click on the workspace and clear. Okay, so let me go to, uh, to, to import my ligands. Like I said, I have already downloaded about 10 of those Artemisia annua compounds for practice. So go to file, click on import structures. I have downloaded them. The, it's on, I, I saved it with this file, docking tutorial. Click on it and open. Okay, so in addition to those compounds, those Artemisia annual compounds, I also have the co-crystallized ligand downloaded directly from PDB. You can also download it from PopChem. You just search for NADH. Okay, so I've downloaded it. I've, so I am going to select everything I have here and then open. So I've selected everything and click on open and then import. So I've, my compounds have been import, imported. There are zero errors. Let's just ignore every other thing and just click on okay. So we have imported the ligands. So I want to prepare the ligand for docking. To prepare the ligand for docking, come to ligand interaction. Click on ligand interaction. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. League, league prep. Oh, wow. We go to league prep. Sorry. Okay, so league prep. Come to the task bar and search for league prep. This is league prep. We are going to be using leak prep. So which structures are we preparing? Use structures from file. You can use your structures. You can pick them from file, but I want to pick them from the project table. This selected, they have been selected. You can see that 11 of them have been selected. 11, 10 test compounds and one co crystallized ligand. So I click on that. Then we can leave everything as default apart from generate at most 32 per ligand. Total mass is asking if we should generate total mass. You can decide to generate total mass, the total mass of your ligands. But I don't want to do that now because of time. I'm going to ask you to generate only one per ligand. And once that is done, what else do we have? Um, I'm going to name my job as let's let's name it as workshop ligand workshop ligand underscore ligands empty space is not allowed so that's why I put an underscore so so the next thing is to run I can adjust my settings. Okay. I, I have I have eight processors. I want to use all my eight processors. Okay. And then the next thing is to run. So I'm preparing my ligands for docking already. So once I finish preparing my ligand, we'll do the docking. And then we will analyze. We'll, we'll analyze, we'll save our data, and then that will be the end of the practical session. So the ligand preparation is running. Do we have any question? Well, Omar, I just want to ask about the first feed you use for the preparation one, for the ligand preparation one? Yes. 
I just left it at default. At default is on OPLS4. You can choose anyone depending on your interest, depending on what you are doing. But if you are new to docking, you can just follow the default setting for now. Okay, so we our job has been incorporated, our ligand has been prepared. So we the, when you come down here, you will see your prepared ligand, leak prep. Please make sure you know the difference. These are the ligands we imported, and then these are the prepared ligands. So in preparation for docking, I'm going to select all these ligands. I'm going to select them in preparation for docking. All these prepared ligands, I'm selecting everything. You can see everything has been selected. I hope you know the difference between something being selected or included. If you want to include anything, you check this box. box. You have included it. But I'm not including anything. I'm only selecting. So let me just um, exclude it. Okay, so I'm, I've include, I have selected all these ligands. So the next thing now is to go for docking. Okay, so let's go to our taskbar. Look for ligand docking. Ligand docking. Okay, so let's begin. Receptor grid. The receptor grid we will use is the receptor grid we generated and it has been saved. So I'll just go to the file. I'm going to pick my receptor grid. You remember the receptor grid I generated the other time. I'm going to use pick it from file. You can also pick from um, you can also pick from the work station, but for now we are picking from the uh, file. Okay, so go to browse to search for it. This is my working directory. Yes, you can. Can you see my Glide Grid IT2C workshop? That is the one I saved. Click on it and click on open. Then click on it again and then open. So I have selected and brought in my grid. And then which ligands am I going to dock? I am docking the ligands I selected from the project table. Project table, 11 ligands selected. Okay, so for the sake of uh, new, new dockers, <laughs> if there's anything like that. Okay, so you, we are, go okay, let me show you some other things. Let's go to settings. Settings, there are di different types of docking you can do here. We have a I trouble virtual screening, we, in which if you have several ligands, hundreds of ligands, thousands of them, you can decide to use I trouble virtual screening, it's faster. And then once you have selected the ones you want, maybe about from 1,000, you selected 100, you can do standard precision docking. See, from there you can select maybe about 20 and then come to extra precision docking. So th these are the different kinds of docking. There's also, okay, a peptide docking. We are not coming, we are not doing that. In fact, it's not available on this, my own version. So we will just click on standard docking because we don't even have more. We can also do extra precision docking, but it may take more time. So to save our time, let's do standard precision docking. Okay, so I think we should go for eye trouble virtual screening so that it can be faster. We want to finish on time. Okay, so you can leave every other thing as default for now. It will still dock. It will give you your results. So everything, I think everything is set now. The last thing we need to do is to name our job. This is eye trouble virtual screening. You can now name it as a workshop. Job workshop. 
workshop, I mean, that will remind us of that that is what we did during the workshop. Okay, so I think everything is almost set. Let's check our job setting. Okay, everything is okay. I have eight local hosts, eight processors. Everything has been selected. So click on run. So docking has begun and we will finish very soon. Since we have chosen a, a faster docking, that's the eye trouble virtual screening. We should be able to finish any moment from now. Any question? Okay, so like I said, it's not enough to know how to do docking. It's very important to know what you are doing. Before you start your docking, you start with a literature search. Understand what you want to do. What is, is it a disease you are trying to find an inhibitor or activator for? Then identify the molecular targets and um, determine whether it has been validated as a druggable target. Okay, so we are we have finished docking. Our result has been incorporated. If you come down, scroll down here, you will see glide dock, HTBS, and so on and so forth. Okay, so to view it, um, I can click on, we can, we can, if I can double click on this IT2C, that's our prepared protein, and then now click on the first ligand. This, that is our standard ligand. I guess it's the one having the highest docking score. You can actually view the docking score from here, and then you can also view it from the project table. Let's view it from here directly. So once you click on setting, you click on show property, choose docking score, click on it, and then click OK. So you can extend this to see your docking score. OK, so you can see the docking score. Our co-crystallized ligand is having the highest docking score, followed by this compound having this PopChem CID 6989, followed by this. So this is how you rank your compounds. For one good thing about Maestro, which is an advantage over Pyrex, is that Maestro will help you rank your ligands. So these ligands have been ranked, but for Pyrex, it will the the it will it will not rank it for you. But you you are the one that will now be checking to see the one with the highest binding uh, docking score and then rank it by yourself. Okay. So now these are this is our docking score. So we have successfully finished this docking. Let's view our. Three, the 3D structure. Okay, you see, you, like I said, you have double click on it to pin it down so that you can be free to pick any of these ligands to analyze. So see, to be able to view the 3D structure of this complex, you can go to presets and double click on presets. So I have double clicked on presets. Let's see what happens. Uh -huh. So you can see it has brought it out in a way for us to understand. I'm using my mouse now, my hand on the scroll button, and I'm rotating so that we can see, we can see our ligand clearly. We can see it very clearly. So can you see the ligand in the binding pocket of the protein? Yeah. You can take it through any direction to see the ligand in the binding pocket of the protein. So this is the 3D. In, in of the interaction. You can see the pocket. You can see the ligand. Yes, any somebody is saying something. Let's let's look at the second one. Let's look at the second compound. I mean, that's the first. The, for, remember, this is NADH, that is our co-crystallized ligand. This is the best. 
the, I, the compound with the highest docking score among our compounds. Let's go to preset again and then see the way it is in the binding pocket. Okay, so you can see it. Can you see the way it entered the pocket? Okay, so, you know, for this kind of compound, look at, you can see that the docking score is even close to that of the co-crystallized ligand. Sometimes you can have docking scores higher than that of the co-crystallized ligand. But for this one, it is close to it. It's a very promising compound. We can do induced fit docking for this. If you do induced fit docking, it will make the active site to be flexible, to be able to improve the affinity of the binding. So, but we are not going into that now. Okay, so let's, this is the 3D. You can decide to save it. So let me, there are two ways of saving it. You can right click on the workspace. Sorry. Anywhere in the workspace, you can right click. Okay, I think I'm having some issues there. You can also screenshot it. You know how to screenshot. Shift um, start S. Once you do that, you can screenshot it or right click. Oh, sorry. Eh, eh. When you right click on the anywhere in the workspace, you can click on save image. Save it in your working directory. You name the image. You can we can decide to name it. Uh, what's the name? Okay, one t two c underscore. What's the pop CID? Six nine eight nine. Six nine eight nine. <coughs> Excuse me. Click, click on save. Click on save again. <coughs> so your work has been saved. And then we can view the 2D interaction. Another important thing about this is that if it is Pyrex you are using, you have to transfer it to Chimera or Discovery Studio and then view the 3D, prepare it, and then go back to the... the Discovery Studio to generate the 2D. But here you can do everything. Just come to ligand interaction. Here is our 2D structure. It's 2D of the interaction, 2D of the complex. So, um, <clears throat> okay, so we can view the uh, the legend, Come if you come to settings here, click on LID legend, so you can see the legend to understand the meaning of all these interactions. For example, all this grain represents hydrophobic interaction. You remember, I told you hydrophobic interaction is the most important determinant of binding. Then we have hydrogen bond, uh, the, the hydroxyl group of this uh, compound is interacting with this residue. So like I was saying the other time, you can use docking to understand the mechanism of binding. So for this one now, we can see that this hydroxyl group is very, very important. It's a very important feature for this binding. Okay, so that is our 2D. We can, can save it. You can screenshot it or come to this place, click on save image. But usually it is more clearer when you screen, screenshot it, but this is a way to save it. You name your structure, give it any name you want and save your structure and it will be saved. So, so now the last thing I want to show you is how to now how to save your docking scores. Come to short project table, come to project table, 
Um, let me show you how you can even locate the docking score here. Once you open the project table, come to tree, tree, click on all, come to glide, primary, docking score. So you can view your docking score from here too. You can see your docking score. Scroll down and you see the docking score. So you have seen the, our docking score. So you can now transfer this one. You can export this data. Come to data. Export this data as a spreadsheet. So you name it. One, okay, sorry, one T two C underscore docking docking score. So you save. So anytime you need, sorry, I need to save. Okay, yes, yes, this is. It's, it's asking whether you should drop export. Yes, it's still part of the process of saving it. So we have saved it. You can go to your file wherever uh, in your working directory or wherever you have saved it to locate your docking score. So we have successfully conducted the docking of some, or the docking of 10 Artemisia annual compounds against plasmodium lactate dehydrogenase. So I think this is where I want to stop for now. Thank you very much. Any other question? Yeah, hello, ma. Hello. Hello, ma. Yeah, please, hello. how do you screen? Yeah, I can hear you. How do you screenshot again? You mentioned about shift uh, start or so. Please, how do you screenshot okay. again? Okay, put your put your finger on shift on the uh, start button. You know the start button on your keyboard, and then S. Once you do that, once I do that, so you can you can now use your cursor, and then you you draw the part you want to screenshot. Once you do that. It has been screenshotted. Then you go to wherever you want to paste it. Let's, for example, let's come to, sorry, let's, um, if you have opened a file, any file or any document, whether a Word document or any document you feel you think you want to save it in. Um, sorry, I, I, I wasn't prepared for that. You can just open your document, right click and play, paste it there, it will paste. You understand, depending on the type of system you are using. And then, sorry, that reminds me to of somebody's question the other time. The person was asking if it's only Linux, what uh, you can use. No, I'm actually using, using um, um, Windows. Windows is what I'm using right now. But there are some features of Schrodinger that will not work on Windows. You need the Linux workspace to do that. But for these features for docking, Windows alone is okay. Well, Ma, thank you very much for the presentation, Ma. <clears throat> I want to ask, because on Pyrex and Camera, I know that uh, the add-in, is the orthodox vena. So I just want to confirm because some uh, when you are when so when someone is preparing this manuscript, sometimes yes. some reviewer used to ask some questions pertaining to what you used to dock the compound. So I want to confirm what Maestro is using. Is he also using vena like Pyrex and Chimera? For oh, Maestro. Okay, let me go, go to my so for my stroke. You can see I'm opening my task bar now. Ligand docking is done on glide. So it's it, it has its own, it's not auto dock. So it's done okay, using it's glide. glide. Yes, glide. Okay, glide. 
Yes. Okay. I think hello. We are... Hello. One uh, one more thank question you so that we can close. Yes. yes please. I just missed the step where you tap to see the 2D structure. Okay. I clicked Wait. on ligand interaction. Can you see it? Yes, ligand see interaction. It. Yes. Once you click on it, it will bring it up. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Professor Jensen, uh, I don't know, is there still any question? Um, not so, okay. Um, I think if anyone still have questions, I'm sure you, everyone is gonna get the video to this lecture, so you can, I mean, pause, rewind, and listen again. So, uh, thank you very much, Professor Jensen, for that uh, practical um, lecture. Thank you. Uh, so, um, it's been a long day. I mean, I can only imagine what we've been like. You did it. Uh, this is past nine. This is almost 10 here. Yeah, so, it's really been a long day. And I want to thank everyone for staying true. So, I want to invite. Dr. Augustina Akinsami, um, who is a lecturer in the biochemistry department in Purdue State University. She's going to be giving us the closing remark. Okay. So, over to you, Professor Augustina. Uh, you're muted right now. Probably. Yes, let me unmute myself. Uh, okay. Wow, it's been it's been a marathon. <laughs> Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his strength. You know, and we want to thank the the team from Purdue University, the professor and his team from Purdue University, and in collaboration with that of the Head of biochemistry, head of department, biochemistry, Professor Dabak, and again to thank especially um our doctor in view, um Yomi Adiboyega. Thank you so much. What a what a gift from your honeymoon. <laughs> thank you so much, and I'm sure all of us that participated, we gained one thing or and another. And I want to disclose this one publicly that um, Jaris, you cannot learn everything. You cannot conclude that now I can, I can, I can now do in silico studies. I can do molecular docking. No, just one teaching two, three, four is not enough. You need mentoring after it. And God bless you. Thank you so much. Even our facilitator, thank you. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Akin. I guess that's, I don't think there's, there's anything more to say. Uh, we should have a good night rest and uh, have a great uh, rest of the year. Bye. Bye, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, right.